Is God happy? We tend to have a bit of a compartmentalized view of the happiness of God. So many people tend to think of God as being happy about some things and unhappy about others. And yeah, to a certain degree that's true, right? People will say things like he's happy when we love him and obey him and he's unhappy and displeased when we sin. That's not really the full story. I think rather than the question of God being happy or not happy with us, uh, there's a deeper question. I think there's a more important and a more foundational thing to ask. And the question is this, what is God like intrinsically? What is he like in his being? That's about who God is and not just what God does because the who shapes the what. And here's the best way we can answer that. Before his creation, before people ever came into the equation, what was God like? What was his basic persona? What was his character? And what we find is that for all eternity past, the Father was happy. That God was happy from eternity past. Happiness is built into him. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit have always enjoyed a happy relationship. In the New Testament, we see both in the baptism of Christ and the transfiguration, this is my son, the beloved one in whom I'm well pleased. The father takes pleasure in the son. You also see this in John 17 and other passages where the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit, they're happy with each other. This means that God in his core is truly happy. He is a joy-filled God, and he has to be because of Genesis 1. See, Genesis 1 is our story, it's the creation narrative. And in this creation narrative, we're shown something striking. Only God can create out of nothing. God doesn't use pre-existing materials, but rather he simply speaks the world into existence. Only he can create out of nothing. Professor Brent Strawn, he puts it like this. He says, in the Bible, God is happy and God's happiness affects and infects the rest of the non-God world, humans included. And here's what that means. If God isn't happy, then happiness can't exist because we lack the ability to create anything out of nothing, which presupposes happiness began with Him. And we only know happiness because it was found from God. So in Genesis, He looks over His creation. He blesses it and says, it is good. See, the creator of the world is also the originator of joy. And when we look carefully through scripture, we find a happy God, a happy God who desires us to draw happiness from him. But he's also a God who created the boundaries of happiness. So my wife and I, we limit the amount of sugar our girls can have at night. Why? Because we're mean, curmudgeony? No, we're after their joy. We set limits so they can sleep better because if they sleep better, they're gonna be happier in the morning. And the same is true of God. He's not a God of rules, he's a God of joy. He's not a wrathful deity, he's a holy creator. And the Father knows that your joy and your holiness, they're connected. Because the holier you are, the happier you're gonna be. It's not about the rules though. The Father is fighting for your joy. See, the whole Trinity is a joyful Trinity. They're a happy Trinity and they're thinking with the end in mind. And so here's the big idea that I hope stays with you. Sadness will go away. Joy will go into all eternity. Because when you experience joy, you're touching eternity. You're tapping into your birthright. If God created you and you're made in his image and he is the happiest being alive, then his joy is your joy. And the Trinity is full of joy. Because sadness will fade away. Pain will fade away. Joy will go into all eternity. God wants you to pursue joy. And he's created the world in a way that joy can be found everywhere. But many of us, we've put God's joy in a box. And we believe God wants us to have joy, but yeah, that joy is during worship and reading the word and prayer. Yeah, that's true. But God also wants you to find joy everywhere else. Genesis 1, he looks at all the world. He looks at everything he's created. And what does he say? It's good. He, he doesn't say church services are all that are good. He doesn't say, well, prayer is all that's good. He looks everywhere and says, it's all good. 
His intent is that you find joy everywhere. Yes, in your relationship with Him, but also in relationship with others. God created us for relationships. He created us because God's all about a family and relationships can bring such joy. Look for those relationships, cherish them. God wants you to find joy in them. He wants you to find joy in what He's created, in nature. He wants you to go to Yosemite and the Grand Canyon, and He wants you to go, oh, wow. He's literally pointing, going, look at what I've done. See, central to the creation of nature, it's joy. You know there are creatures in the ocean we'll never see? There are planets and stars we'll never see? So, so why are they created? They're simply recreated because they bring God joy. Nature is for our joy. God created and he says to his kids, come back, come over here, come over here. This, this is all for you. God wants you to find joy in food. If he didn't, everything would taste the same. But God wants you to experience the wonder and joy of a perfectly done ribeye or a really good cup of coffee or a beautiful cinnamon roll in the morning. There are a few things in life better than sharing a good meal with people you love. And listen, we could go on and on and on of all the ways and all the things God has created for our joy. He is a happy God. And our understanding of our own happiness is directly correlated to how happy we think God is. The happiness factor in our life is all about our understanding of our own happiness and how it directly correlates to how happy we think God is. Friends, we serve a happy God. We serve a God full of joy, a God full of life. Taking complicated ideas about God and making them simple.